Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Artist Loft 101 drawing class. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and tonight's class is on drawing negative space. Uh, so if you are just tuning in, this is part of a ongoing weekly series that I've partnered with Michaels to bring you. And uh, most of the classes are free and occurring on Wednesday evenings at this time, but there are some classes that are scheduled for, for different days, so check the calendar. And there's also several uh, premium classes coming up. So uh, one class that I know is coming up soon is the facial proportion class, drawing basic facial proportions, I believe is the title of the class, and that is a premium class, so there is a, a small fee for the class. Um, so hopefully you guys will, will join me for those as well. Um, but love to see so many familiar faces in these, uh, all of the classes. Uh, so tonight we're talking about uh, drawing negative space and we're gonna fill up most of the hour with the, the process of uh, this this drawing that we're going to do tonight together. So if there are any leftover questions at the end of class, I do a little Instagram live session on my Instagram Instagram um, right after class at uh, 7.05 p.m. So if you're watching this recording later, you can still go to my Instagram and see the, the live Q&A because um, it will stay on my Instagram on my IGTV. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my desktop view here and we'll get started. So make sure that you tag your work that you make with uh, us tonight or later if you're uh, watching this recording on YouTube, tag your work with Make It With Michaels or Michaels Classes and follow me on Instagram and you can even tag me on Instagram with your work. Uh, the supplies for tonight's class were uh, the Artist Loft uh, drawing or sketching pad. I've got the Artist Loft sketching pencils, the illustration pens, and I've got the, the set with um, a 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.3, and then also a brush tip pen. So that's kind of the, the trickier supply that we're going to be using tonight. If you've never used a brush pen, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making it work for you because I know myself included, uh, a lot of people when they first use a brush pen don't quite know um, the optimal way to use it. So we've got that and then the Artist Loft uh, I've got an artist loft graphing ruler, any ruler or straight edge will work, although you do want um, a ruler, sometimes a straight edge will work, but you are going to want a ruler and then a synthetic eraser or any eraser that you have. And uh, this photo was included in the supply list, so this is the reference photo that I will be using. Okay, and then here's just a few of my business cards with my personal work. If anybody's interested in finding me, I'm pretty easy to find on the internet. Uh, Instagram's the main place, but I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art, and um, there's my website and email, all of which are linked on my, my Instagram and my link tree. Okay, uh, any questions about supplies before we get started tonight? No questions on supplies. Okay, cool. So um, I actually forgot my uh, example drawing for uh, tonight's class at, at home in another sketchbook. So Kelly has a, a copy of that example and I'm gonna have her just pop that up on the screen a couple times. But I think that uh, by the end of class, I should have an example that looks pretty close to that. And it actually looks very close to this photograph. Um, and that's if you're not using my reference photo and you're using a photo reference of your own, something with really strong contrasting light is what you want. And then also making the photograph black and white will be really helpful to help you isolate the positive and negative space in the image. So I've got this picture of a plant 
just like a plant leaf and then the shadow that it was casting across the wall along with the shadow from and the light from the window that was coming in and um, I made it black and white to isolate those values. But do you mind popping the example up on the screen for a minute, Kelly? Oh, putting that on the screen. I just dropped it in the chat. Oh, okay. If that's helpful. Um, okay. Um, is it possible to get it on the screen so that it'll show up in the recording? Um, the photo you sent me? Yes. Um, let me see. We can do it in a, in a minute um, if that's, that's easier. Um, okay, yeah. Let me just try to figure. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, yeah, if you just want to interrupt me and let me know when you've got it. I mean, the the demo example, the one that was in the, the flyer, um, it, it was really similar to this photograph. So it, if there was any night for me to forget the, uh, <laughs> the demo example, tonight was a good one. Um, so I'll just dive in with it and I'll, I'll reference that one or I'll just reference my, my drawing that I'm making tonight. Okay, so what I wanted to show you in that example was just how I organized it on the page and uh, the image that I sent Kelly, our moderator, had um, uh, sort of cropped so you couldn't see how I centered it in the middle of the page, but you could still see that I created a box on the page. So the reason why I want to create a box on the page is for a couple of reasons. One, because it looks cool and it's an extra additional skill that I can show you. And two, because we are gonna be filling in uh, the, the shadows and the values here um, with a lot of our, our pen work, and that's gonna take a lot of pen work. And so rather than filling up this large piece of paper with the drawing, we're gonna create a, a bit of a, a frame within the, the page uh, by creating margins. So if you've never created margins on uh, your paper before you, and if it, you get a little lost while I'm showing you the, the math um, in creating margins, you can always just float your box in the middle of the page. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean uh, by that here. I'm not measuring the sides of the paper at all. I'm just gonna create um, a box. And so it really doesn't matter what size I make the box even. We just want it to imitate the shape of the, the printout, which is a rectangle. So I think five by seven is a good one. So if I'm not worried about margins, all I'm gonna do is just line up my ruler with the edge of the paper so that I know I'm making a straight line and I'm just going to do five inches here and then seven inches. I'm lining up one of the lines on my ruler with that line that I know is straight. That way my box won't be wonky. And then I'm just going from the 10 to the three to create a five by seven box. And then lining that up again so that I know I'm making a straight line. And so now I've created a box in the center of the page to work from, but it doesn't have equal margins. So why would you want equal margins? Well, if this turned out to be something that you were really happy with and you wanted to pop it in a frame that you happen to have of this size, creating even margins will make it so that you don't need to buy a mat uh, board and you could just go ahead and you know pop it into a frame if you had a frame that was nine by 12 that is the size of the paper and then you'd have you know your lovely art centered in the middle um, if you don't want to mess around with equal margins and you didn't do that you just kind of floated it in the middle of the page but then you still wanted to frame it then that's when you just take it to a framer that is skilled and they will they will make it work. Framers are magicians and they can frame anything if you go to a nice enough frame store. Okay, so I'm gonna create equal margins. And like I said, if you get lost and it's uh, you're not, you know, yours don't 
turn out equal. It's not the end of the world. It can just be floating in the middle of the page. But to create equal margins, I need to measure uh, the paper. You might not have a nine by 12 sketchbook um, like me. And if you, you know, didn't get the artist loft uh, drawing pad that I have, but there's also the artist loft drawing pad is 12 inches um, from the edge of the, the paper here at the top of the spiral to the, the bottom of the page. And so if you were to make it perfectly centered, you actually want to measure from like a line underneath the, the spiral marks there. So that is not quite 12. It ends up being, I know that's kind of cut off in my screen, um, but it ends up being just over 11 and a half. So I've got 11 and a half. I'm just going to call it 11.5 by, by nine because there's nothing getting in the way of the paper being nine inches in width. All right, so I've got 11 and a half by nine inches and I want to have equal margins. So uh, what I do is, um, let's say I want to have, well, 11 and a half divided by two is 5.25 by, and then nine divided by two is 4.5. So that's how much space there would be Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. If I were to put a five by seven box in the middle of this, then I would subtract, give me just a second while I do the math here. This is why having my other example would have been helpful because I would just cheat and measure the box that I did on the other one and I forgot to do that. Okay, so give me just a moment here, folks. So. If I did five by seven, then that means nine minus five. I'm gonna do my, my 80s math over here. So I'll have four inches left over after I put the box in on that on the width side and 11 and a half minus seven is 3.5, I'm sorry, 4.5, right? All right, and then I divide that in half. So four divided by two is two, and 4.5 divided by two is 2.25. So that means my margins, have I confused anyone yet? Um, my margins are going to be two inches each on the width side, and they're going to be uh, 2.25 inches on the length side of the paper. I'm just going to tear that out so I have that there to reference. Okay, and so I want to make sure that on the the length that I'm doing 11.5, not a little bit over 11.5. So I'm starting the edge of my paper right there, basically. Okay, so on the length side, I want to have 2.25 margins. So I measure 2.25. I'm gonna make a little tick mark. And then I can go ahead and draw. Well, no, I'm not going to draw anything yet. Just making tick marks. So we want to make tick marks all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the width side first. I'm just going to go each side at a time. So I'm going this far down and then two inches in. Make another tick mark there. 
And then same thing on this side. This far down and then two inches in. So right about there. So that's that way. I'm going to flip it over. Do that on the other side. So I'm going 2.25 inches. That's 2.5. I'll go down that far and make a tick mark. Two inch mark. Again, over here. Two inches in. So now I should have all of my corners for my box. I'm just going to double check. It's always good to double check your measurements because like I just realized I went two and a half inches, not 2.25 here. Like they say measure twice cut once in a, a wood shop. So when it comes to drawing, you measure twice, draw once. A lot of mistakes that people make with rulers can be easily avoided by just double checking your measurement. Okay, so I should have a tick mark at all four corners of where this box is going to go. And if it's not perfectly centered, that's okay because we just want it to be mostly centered. Double check my measurement here. I think I did the same thing. I did two and a half instead of 2.5. Okay. Forgot which one I was erasing for a second there. Okay, so now I'm going to connect all of these, these four tick marks that I made. And I should have a five by seven box. to draw lightly when you make those tick marks so that they're easy to erase and use a lighter pencil. I was using my 4H. So if you're making tick marks and lines and you get thrown off and a lot of the marks that you made were kind of dug into the paper or really hard to erase, it might be worth starting over on a fresh sheet of paper or, you know, using really light lines. Oh, somehow, oh, okay, yeah, right. I redrew my tick marks here. So those were my, my first ones. Okay, so now I've got a five by seven box that is floating in the center of the, the page. We're centered with, with nice, even margins. Okay, and yeah, that just looks really nice. Um, if you were doing something like this using like 
watercolor paper and you were doing a, a watercolor piece, you know, just adding margins like that and working within a, a measured box in the, the center of the the page like that really just elevates the the quality of the work and then you could tape off um, those margins as well so that you have a clean line later. Um, but we don't need to, to do that here, although you might tape it off so that you don't accidentally go outside of it with the pen as we're drawing. Okay, so drawing negative space, you guys are like, wow, 20 minutes draw in a box, but I think it's an extra, it's kind of like when I talked about uh, sharpening the pencils with a blade. I've had so many requests to show how to do that again, because that is a skill that you can apply to so many different um, projects or you know so many every day when you're drawing sharpening your pencil like that can be helpful and if you missed those classes they were towards the the beginning of this series um i i did them in the composition tips and or oh my god that wasn't the name of the class it was the class on contour lines introduction to graphite and contour lines should have that in it um one of those examples anyway Okay, so negative space. The way that we're gonna approach this drawing is we are going to not draw the positive space. So the positive space would be the space being taken up by an object, right? And the negative space is going to be the space in between that object. We often tend to ignore the space in between the, the objects and try to just draw the object itself and oftentimes our proportions will be way off and as an art teacher one of the number one ways that i help people fix a drawing where the proportions are off like say on a still life or honestly anything is to make a little map and sketch out the the spaces in between the the negative space in between objects because that's where you can kind of diagnose where you're, you went wrong. Um, and so by doing an exercise like this tonight, by drawing the space in between the, the negative space, we're training our brains to notice that space. And so what we're doing tonight is extremely straightforward. And so I'm just gonna do a quick little example here before I jump to my, my final paper box that I drew there. So let's say I'm drawing this, this part of the, the shadow right here. And we're calling it the positive space, even though it's a shadow. So it's technically, you know, debatable if it's, you know, taking up space or not, but you know what I mean. Um, so all the time I'm saying when we, it comes to value shapes or any organic shapes in a drawing to ask yourself, what else does that look like? Like instead of calling that the space in between a leaf and a stalk, this shape right here kind of has the shape of like a carrot, right? Right there, it's like a carrot and then maybe like another carrot over here or maybe um, like a hammer or a, a pitch, a pickaxe, right? Like here's the, the handle and then here's the, the blade. So I'm gonna draw that shape that organic shape that I'm seeing there. And I've got just a B pencil here. So I'm just drawing the space in between, not the object itself. And then when it comes to these leaves, leaves here, rather than drawing the leaves, again, I'm looking at the shape that I'm seeing in between the leaves. So right here, I see something that looks like a sock puppet on a hand. That's what I'm seeing right there. Or maybe like a whale. Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna keep doing this, but I'm gonna do it on the final paper. So that's essentially what we're doing. And then by default of drawing that, now we've got the positive space right there. So what I ended up just drawing by drawing the, the negative space is I can fill it in and I can just fill it in with 
some diagonal shading lines. We're going to do this with our pens in a bit. Um, now I've just, you know, shaded in that top part of the stock right there. Okay. So, um, and then just to demonstrate the, the brush pen before we get started here. Um, so a brush pen is like a paintbrush. If you've got your brush pen, take it out right now. We're just going to do a couple of little drills and I'm just going to do them quickly here. But if you're really struggling to control the brush pen, then I want you to do this more before you attempt to use it too much on your, your final drawing. But um, so I want you to hold it a few different ways, like practice holding it where uh, the, the tip is going towards the paper, uh, where where it's like above your hand and then hold it where it's coming out of the, the side of your hand and then practice holding it like this. Find what the most comfortable way to hold it is for you and then turn it on its side and see if you can get a nice thick even line to happen. So I just made that look really easy but chances are when you're doing it, you've got a lot of gaps happening or a lot of weirdness might be happening. So the pressure might not be even. So that might take holding it a few different ways to be able to get a nice thick line like that to happen. And then I'm gonna turn it the other way and I'm gonna drag it up just the tip and see how thin of a line I can make with the brush pen. And you can let it kind of be a broken line or a dotted line. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. We just want to make a thin mark with it. And then once we've done that, we're going to do some figure eights. So we're going to do kind of a downstroke and then switch and then do a thin upstroke. So I'll do that a few times. I'm doing a thick downstroke and then I twisted it. And then I'm going to pull it up. So if you've ever done any calligraphy, um, that's important in calligraphy, the downstroke and the upstroke. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. I want you to practice that. But the more loose you can be with the brush pen, the better. Like if you want to try to do some scribbly lines with it and just, you know, see how much line variation you can get with it. And that's going to really help when it comes to filling in because we can fill in in a thick way or we can get these nice edges to happen. Or if you're just like, I hate the brush pen and I'm not able to do what you're doing with it yet, then you might just stick with your, your other nibbed pens tonight, but it's going to take you more time to cover the surface area of the positive space in our drawing using the uh, regular nibbed pen. And if you can, you know, get comfortable with the brush pen, then we can quickly fill in these areas a lot faster, but we don't want to be too heavy handed with it. So we want to make sure that we can get in those little pockets too. So I'm going to really use my brush pen for the majority of my drawing because especially since we're already running low on time after my meandering uh, box drawing there. Any questions before I get started on the, the final drawing? No questions at the moment, thank you. Okay, great. All right, so I'm gonna start with the, the easiest large uh, area of negative space here, and that is the, the big uh, sliver of light here. So I've got this big sliver of light and then this big sliver of light. But this one has pretty minimal and you can even if you printed out the photo, you could take your pencil and outline that shape with your your pencil here and just kind of give your hand the muscle memory of the shape that we're drawing. But I Hopefully, I think you guys are already seeing how this is such a straightforward thing we're doing tonight. And it's definitely, this is one of those lessons that's a confidence booster. And that's why I wanted to take the time to show you how to create nice margins in your sketchbook. Because by the end of this, we're really going to have a nice little piece here. And since I've, you know, given you this 
this reference image, um, you have the have the permission to use my image, you know, feel free to do whatever you want with this this artwork. Um, most of the time, if you find a reference photo online, you maybe don't have the permission of the photographer to do, you know, use it for your your personal art, you might use it to practice with but if you wanted to you know ever do anything else like show that work or sell it then you know you've got copyright infringement issues to worry about but i'm giving you this reference photo so you can do whatever you want with the art that you make with this just you know tag it make it with michaels and tag me okay so i've got that shape right there and then I just drew the, the second little line here. I'm not going to necessarily narrate every shape that I'm doing. Um, and I know that y'all are going to be kind of on your own with it, but um, you're going to see when you might be off. So like right now, I just went a little off. Like I'm not, I didn't quite nail the, the shape there, but it's not the end of the world with this necessarily because it's such organic shapes that's it's a very forgiving reference image here but if you were drawing the shadow of let's say a bicycle or uh, something with you know some more concrete proportions that if it was really off you're going to see it like the exercise they would have us do in college to practice this would be they would stick a couple of stools uh, you know, bar stools or art stools on the, the table and then be like, okay, draw the spaces in between, you know, the art stools. And so you've got the added headache of the perspective and, you know, if something's off, you're going to notice it. But with this, if something's off, you've just got a fatter leaf than, than before. And even though this is like gonna all be lumped together uh, later. If you wanted to, you know, draw the the line there as the shape of that leaf, you can. Okay, so as I'm drawing this, I'm trying not to draw the the shape itself. Although I kind of just messed up and started drawing the positive space right there. But when I got to right here, I made sure to draw the negative space shape. So just keep that in mind as you're doing this. Like, am I drawing? the positive space or am I focusing on the negative space? There's really no right or wrong anything here. It's just an exercise and it's just to help train your brain. And <clears throat> that's why I chose such an organic reference photo for us so that everybody's gonna still have a nice result. Um, the only thing you really wanna try to get as close as possible is um, probably around here by these leaf, this leaf. Uh, and that's just because I think it'll look better, you know, if you can get the shapes of those leaves, but if they end up being, you know, bigger or in a different place in your drawing, it's fine. As long as you have observed negative space and have attempted to train your brain to draw the negative space rather than the positive space you're doing great so there's a lot of little keyhole spaces right here on the leaf of this money tree i killed this plant by the way i was like what does it mean that i killed my money tree The bad omen. My friend gave it to me. It was so sweet. I was so grateful. It was such a nice gift. And then I don't know what I did wrong. I was new to house plants. Actually, I do know what I did wrong. I put it outside. I felt like it wasn't quite getting enough light. So I put it outside and then it just, it died. It didn't want to handle the, the Texas heat. Anyway, 
Okay, so I'm right up against this one skinny leaf right here and I realize I'm kind of scrunching some stuff together in my drawing here. So it's kind of why I'm saying, let's be forgiving with our proportions because I'm not sticking to proportions perfectly. But I'm on this skinny leaf right here and I'm trying to draw this space, but I want to leave some space right here between the skinny leaf and this leaf that was hanging over from my peace lily shadow. My peace lily is still doing great in case anybody was wondering. I killed the money tree but the peace lily survived. Okay. It definitely requires some brain power, folks. I'm not able to talk and do this at the same time. Keep getting lost in it. Okay, so right here is a tricky one. Looking at this big kind of, what does that look like? Like a triangle, that, like a hat, like a hat, a witch's hat. All right, and by doing that, I just closed in my leaf on that side. And there may be a couple of spots when you're like, you know what, Adrian, I'm just gonna draw the positive space right here. Like I am just drawing that positive space shape because it's kind of hanging out on its own. It feels silly to trace the negative space shape there. Okay, here's a good one. So I've come up right against this moment here and I wanna leave a gap where my little pickaxe shape was happening. And yeah, it looks like the pickaxe shape. Okay, so I think I got everything in that little area. That's probably the trickiest area. How are we doing on time? 20 minutes, not bad. Okay, so I got the, everything in that area. I forgot this shape right here. This little pocket. Okay, and then there's this big leaf hanging in front. That's not a shadow, it's the actual leaf of the the peace lily and i'm just going to go ahead and, and sketch the overall shape of that right here but then i'm gonna put the as i'm putting the shadows and light in there rather than focusing on the shadows i'm going to focus on the light because i feel like the light is feels more like the negative space because oftentimes everybody pays attention to the shapes of the shadows, but they don't necessarily pay attention to the shapes of the light. So by sketching those in, it's another good departure from what we usually do. And any kind of drawing practice that you do where you're really having to think and disconnect from you know, what you, your habits, you're forming new neural pathways in your brain. Okay, so I've got my big negative space drawn. That looks pretty good. If you're at this point and you want to double check it and see any moments that are bothering you, you could do that now. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush pen and start filling things in, unless anybody has any burning questions. No questions right now, sorry. I'm just reading a comment that came in. Um, 
I'm going to drop the picture again in the chat for everyone to see. And then we just have someone saying that they have a difficult, uh, Michael here is saying they have a difficult time drawing negative space. Um, they have trained themselves to draw the positive and trying to draw the negative space is still hard for them, maddening to them. Right. Well, yeah. So, I mean, anything uh, that's challenging like this, it just takes lots of practice, you know? So uh, finding examples like this. Um, so the photo that I had Kelly drop in the chat is a picture of my, my drawing uh, demo, uh, which I'm about to have another example of as soon as I fill this in. The, the photo that was included in the supply list is my reference photo. So, um, which is all you really need. Um, I just wanted to have it there to flash on the screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna, even though there's some other values in this photograph, there's some, you know, variation in grayscale. Um, I'm just gonna make this all black. So we're really simplifying it here. And I'm just gonna use my brush pen, but you can use whichever pen you feel most comfortable with. And as you're outlining, feel free to just outline the positive space because we've already done the hard work of drawing the negative space and it might throw you off. Um, but if you want to challenge yourself to outline the, the negative space again, feel free to do that. It's definitely a brain teaser to have to look at those shapes. But I mean, it's so helpful. It's definitely when it comes to portrait drawing um, in that facial proportion lesson that's coming up in the premium classes, I will definitely talk about negative space when it comes to capturing a likeness because it's all about the particular proportions that any face has. Um, and most of the time, beginners, when they're looking at a human face, are paying attention to, you know, uh, the the intro. I'm saying the interesting parts. You're paying attention to the eyes, the lips, the nose, right? But you're not maybe looking at the space in between the eyes and the lips. But that's really where you're going to be able to capture somebody's likeness. It's all in those details and there's no such thing as a perfectly proportioned face. So all of the little variations that our facial features have and our, our proportions of our faces have is where you're going to be able to capture a person's likeness. So it's really important to be able to identify negative space and the, the space in between um, the, the place where your eyes tend to go because it's going to help you with proportions and also, you know, just capturing the nuance or the, the unique, you know, energy of something like with these uh, leaves and 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 stalks. They're they're such interesting shapes, and our brains tend to have a symbol in our mind for a lot of different things, like a leaf or a stalk on a a plant, etc. You've got that kind of stock image in your mind, and when you're drawing the positive space, it's really easy to kind of default to the the stock image in your your brain and to not observe it but if we're drawing the negative space it's going to be a lot easier to capture all the little idiosyncrasies of those shapes because it's maybe outside of what your brain could imagine it to be Okay, I think I've pretty much outlined everything. I'm going to go ahead and start filling it in and I'm going to try to keep, as I'm filling in, I'm going to try to keep my brush strokes with this brush pen pretty uniform because what's going to happen with any uh, felt tip pen is you're going to get a little bit of like an overlap or a streak to happen 
And it's really hard to keep that from not happening. So you just got to embrace that, honestly, and let it be there. Um, if it bothered you when you, you know, photograph it later, if it shows up in the photograph, you can always turn up the contrast on the photo so that those little streaky lines don't show up. The nice thing about using liquid ink, which I use so much of in my personal work, I've got ways of getting rid of those streaks. You can also do another layer on top and you're less likely to have those streaky moments showing up. You can see how using the brush pen is making it so that I can cover a larger area faster. I'm going to try to stick to diagonal lines the whole time, but I might put some verticals or just fill in some spaces as well. And like I said, if you're struggling with the brush pen to control it, you can do exactly what I'm doing with one of the other illustration pens. It's just going to take more time. So if I was filling this in with the five, could just, and this could also, you know, maybe you like the look of this hatching lines with the, the smaller nib pens. You don't necessarily have to fill it in solid. Or you could do it like this and then go over it with the, the brush pen. It's just up to you but it might be easier to get into these little small spots for you. I'm just using the brush pen because I've got pretty good control of it and I'm trying to finish this before the end of the class. And I just noticed we've got 11 minutes, but I think I can do it. I might end up just filling in most of that peace lily with solid black. So yeah, like I said, all of this ends up getting lumped together, even though there was a separation between like a, a light, a lighter gray or a medium dark and a, a dark there. We're just making it all, all the positive space solid black. Another cool thing that you could do, and this is a project that could be done with, um, with kids as well. If you're a teacher and you're looking for a fun thing to do with your students that would teach them about negative space. So you would do two boxes like this, or you could split this photo down the middle just for an interesting design. And on one side, you would color in the positive space black. And then on the other side, you would fill in the negative space black. So you've got kind of a negative version of it. All right, I'm gonna go quickly, try to fill this all in as quickly as I can without being sloppy. I don't know why I'm like leaving some areas blank. This is all going to end up black. I'm going to leave the leaf alone in front for now. Maybe I'll just fill in the, the shadows with the black. I think I started to do that with my other example and then I ended up having a little bit of variation or I tried to and then in the end I made it pretty solid black. Were you able to figure out how to put that other demo up on the, the screen, Kelly, just in case I don't <laughs> finish this one? I'm like, I'm gonna finish it. I think I can. 
I'm so sorry, I wasn't, but we can try to put it maybe um, attach it to the YouTube video as well. Maybe link it to, because it's on the Michael's website as well for your class info. Oh, okay. Oh, is it the example? I thought it was just the uh, reference photo. Oh, is that a different photo? Sorry. That reference photo looks very similar to the, the final product. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where somebody was getting confused earlier in the chat. I saw that. Um, I can finish it. I just wanted to reference something in the, the completed one, but Sorry about that, Adrian. I think I can do it. I'm going to focus here. I'm almost there. It's just always nice to have that other demo when I don't finish because then I can just switch, <laughs> you know, like a cooking show. Like, and then here's the finished casserole. Okay, so I want to be a little careful near the edges of my box. I'm going to go really slowly there and then I'm going to quickly fill in all the rest. Turn my paper this way for my steadiest hand movement. Normally I try to go nice and slow with these, but I guess if you're watching the YouTube video later, you can always slow it down and see how I'm doing some of these things. It's all about muscle memory and control. I've had a lot of years of practice being able to do a straight line with a brush pen like that. And I might want to go over this a second time after the class, but for now I'm just going to get it all filled in. But yeah, if you're not using your brush pen and you're using your regular nib pen to do this, it's going to take a lot longer. I really like the Artist Loft brush pen too, by the way, for those of you who this is your first brush pen you've ever used. I've used a lot of different brush pens and the inkier, the better for me. Sometimes the ink gets a little slowed down in, in other brush pens, but I like that it, it has such a smooth flow of ink. Okay, so now I'm just going to fill in the shadows on the peace lily leaf. And I'll leave it up to you if you want to fill yours in solid black, although if you fill it in solid black, it'll just kind of disappear into the, the rest of it, which I think is what I ended up doing with my other example. But first I did this, I kind of used the, the other nib pen to, to guide me and make it follow the contours. So if you wanted to do something like that, just to have some variety of, of lines in yours, that could be good too. And then, yeah, if you had any little spaces that you needed to clean up, 
can always go back in with your other nib pen and clean up any of those little areas. But yeah, a fun alternative would be to do this again or do it twice with filling in the, the negative space in black since we filled in the positive space here and that would definitely be another challenge for your brain. All right, I'm impressed with my ability to fill that in so fast. I really did it, you guys. Great job, Adrian. Looks you, Kelly. <laughs> Question from Margarita here. Do you use a drawing table when you draw most of the time? Um, most of the time, yes, I do use a drafting table and um, Artist Loft makes a drafting table um, and having that incline that tilt is really helpful and I've mentioned this in other classes before if you you know don't want to invest in the um, in the, the drafting table even though I think it's pretty affordable the artist loft one there's also a drawing board like this you want to switch to my other camera real quick Kelly um, so a drawing board like this you can sit you know on the couch or even at a desk and kind of prop it up on something so that you've got an incline. It's just easier on your back, um, especially when you're doing something like this where you might get sucked in to, to drawing for um, you know hours and hours focusing on that negative space. It's nice to have um, you know the incline of the, the drafting table. And yeah, I do prefer that, even though I am teaching at a flat desk here. Um, okay, so there's my my completed negative space drawing pretty close to the, the original demo that I, I didn't have. Um, does anybody else want to uh, hold up their example so that we can see what you did tonight? All right, and I see Barbara here. I'll be spotlighting hers. Lovely, Barbara. I see Arthur's is up. I'm going to spotlight his. Very nice, Arthur. Awesome. I see Annette's. Here we go. Lovely. Great. We actually did receive one question earlier. I'm not sure if you saw it. It was about your studio. Um, wondering if you could maybe give a little explanation about your studio and the pictures in it. They said they really like it every time they see it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, I'm based here in Austin, Texas, and there's actually a studio tour happening over the next couple of weeks where I'll have my studio space open um, if you happen to be in the Austin area, you can come by and see my studio soon. Uh, I'm rearranging things right now, so I've kind of just got an, an easel back here. I've got um, my studio mate and I are still setting up. So one of these paintings over my shoulder is actually my uh, studio mate, Lauren Tarbell is her name. And if you go on my Instagram, um, you can see my recent posts about the studio tour and link to her page if you're interested in, in that painting. And then this is one of my paintings in ink. Uh, behind me, I do a lot of abstract stuff with um, clouds, a lot of commentary on dreams and lucid dreaming and different, you know, dimensions in space. I'm really fascinated with quantum physics and a lot of my work deals with themes in uh, physics and uh, time, memory, a lot of my portraits. I've done this series called The Shape of Time that's focused on uh, autobiographical memories and in my life. Um, so yeah, I've got that. This is my space where I, I do all that work and I answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Yeah, I love I just talking about her, your studios. So I saw that question. I was like, that's perfect. Like it's such yeah, awesome asking. And if you want to know more about anything, uh, uh, do Instagram live after the class or even check my Instagram later, if you're watching this recording, um, I'll have the, the Instagram live still up, but I'll be heading there now to start a, a live Q&A if anybody wants to join me and ask me any more questions. And I'm sure I'll be talking about the studio tour that's coming up um, as well. All right, thank you all for another great class. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Kelly. All right, good night.